And now, Chapter 3, Birth of Lord Krishna. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that His appearance, birth, and activities are all transcendental, and one who understands them factually becomes immediately eligible to be transferred to the spiritual world. The Lord's appearance, or birth, is not like that of an ordinary man who is forced to accept a material body according to his past deeds. The Lord's appearance is explained in the second chapter. He appears out of his own sweet pleasure. When the time was mature for the appearance of the Lord, the constellations became very auspicious. The astrological influence of the star, known as Rohini, was also predominant because this star is considered to be very auspicious. Rohini is under the direct supervision of Lord Brahma. According to the astrological conclusion, besides the proper situation of the stars, there are auspicious and inauspicious moments due to the different situations of the different planetary systems. At the time of Krishna's birth, the planetary systems were automatically adjusted so that everything became auspicious. At that time, in all directions, east, west, south, north, everywhere, there was an atmosphere of peace and prosperity. There were auspicious signs visible in the sky, and on the surface, in all towns and villages, or pasturing grounds, and within the mind of everyone, there were signs of good fortune. The rivers were flowing full of waters, and lakes were beautifully decorated with lotus flowers. The forests were full with beautiful birds and peacocks. All the birds within the forests began to sing with sweet voices, and the peacocks began to dance along with their consorts. The wind blew very pleasantly, carrying the aroma of different flowers, and the sensation of bodily touch was very pleasing. At home, the Brahmins, who were accustomed to offer sacrifices in the fire, found their homes very pleasant for offerings. Due to disturbances created by the demoniac kings, the sacrificial fire altar had been almost stopped in the houses of Brahmins, but now they could find the opportunity to start the fire peacefully. Being forbidden to offer sacrifices, the Brahmins were very distressed in mind, intelligence, and activities. But just on the point of Krishna's appearance, automatically their minds became full of joy because they could hear loud vibrations in the sky of transcendental sounds proclaiming the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The denizens of the Gandharva and Kinnara planets began to sing, and the denizens of Siddhaloka and the planets of the Charanas began to offer prayers in the service of the Personality of Godhead. In the heavenly planets, the angels, along with their wives, accompanied by the Apsaras, began to dance. The great sages and the demigods, being pleased, began to shower flowers at the seashore. There was the sound of mild waves, and above the sea there were clouds in the sky which began to thunder very pleasingly. When things were adjusted like this, Lord Vishnu, who is residing within the heart of every living entity, appeared in the darkness of night as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, before Devaki, who also appeared as one of the demigoddesses. The appearance of Lord Vishnu at that time could be compared to the full moon in the sky as it rises on the eastern horizon. The objection may be raised that, since Lord Krishna appeared on the eighth day of the waning moon, there could be no rising of the full moon. In answer to this, it may be said that Lord Krishna appeared in the dynasty which is in the hierarchy of the moon. 
Therefore, although the moon was incomplete on that night because of the Lord's appearance in the dynasty, wherein the moon is himself the original person, the moon was in an overjoyous condition. So, by the grace of Krishna, he could appear just as a full moon. In an astronomical treatise by the name Kamanikya, the constellations at the time of the appearance of Lord Krishna are very nicely described. It is confirmed that the child born at that auspicious moment was the Supreme Brahman or the Absolute Truth. Vasudev saw that wonderful child, born as a baby with four hands, holding conch shell, club, disc, and lotus flower, decorated with the mark of Srivatsa, wearing the jeweled necklace of Kaustuba stone, dressed in yellow silk, appearing dazzling like a bright blackish cloud, wearing a helmet bedecked with the Vaidurya stone, valuable bracelets, earrings, and similar other ornaments all over his body, and an abundance of hair on his head. Due to the extraordinary features of the child, Vasudev was struck with wonder. How could a newly born child be so decorated? He could therefore understand that Lord Krishna had now appeared, and he became overpowered by the occasion. Vasudev very humbly wondered that although he was an ordinary living entity conditioned by material nature and was externally imprisoned by Kamsa, the all-pervading personality of Godhead, Vishnu or Krishna was appearing as a child in his home, exactly in his original position. No earthly child is born with four hands, decorated with ornaments and nice clothing, fully equipped with all the signs of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Over and over again, Vasudev glanced at his child, and he considered how to celebrate this auspicious moment. Generally, when a male child is born, he thought, people observe the occasion with jubilant celebrations. And in my home, although I am imprisoned, the Supreme Personality of Godhead has taken birth. How many millions of millions of times should I be prepared to observe this auspicious ceremony? When Vasudev, who was also called, called Anaka Dundubi, was looking at his newborn baby, he was so happy that he wanted to give many thousands of cows in charity to the Brahmins. According to the Vedic system, whenever there is an auspicious ceremony in the Kshatriya king's palace, the king gives many things in charity. Cows decorated with golden ornaments are delivered to the Brahmins and sages. Vasudev wanted to perform a charitable ceremony to celebrate Krishna's appearance. But because he was shackled within the walls of Kamsa's prison, this was not possible. Instead, within his mind, he gave thousands of cows to the Brahmins. When Vasudev was convinced that the newborn child was the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself, He bowed down with folded hands and began to offer Him prayers. At that time, Vasudev was in the transcendental position and He became completely free from all fear of Kamsa. The newborn baby was also flashing His effulgence within the room in which He appeared. Vasudev then began to offer his prayers. My dear Lord, I can understand who you are. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Super Soul of all living entities, and the Absolute Truth. You have appeared in your own eternal form, which is directly perceived by us. I understand that because I am afraid of Kamsa, 
you have appeared just to deliver me from that fear. You do not belong to this material world. You are the same person who brings about the cosmic manifestation simply by glancing over material nature. One may argue that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who creates the whole cosmic manifestation simply by his glance, cannot come within the womb of Devaki, the wife of Vasudev. To eradicate this argument, Vasudev said, My dear Lord, it is not a very wonderful thing that you appear within the womb of Devaki, because the creation was also made in that way. You are lying in the causal ocean as Mahavishnu, and by your breathing process, innumerable universes came into existence. Then you entered into each of the universes as Garbhodakshayi Vishnu. Then again you expanded yourself as Kshirodakshayi Vishnu and entered into the hearts of all living entities and entered even within the atoms. Therefore, your entrance into the womb of Devaki is understandable in the same way. You appear to have entered, but you are simultaneously all-pervading. We can understand your entrance and non-entrance from material examples. The total material energy remains intact even after being divided into 16 elements. The material body is nothing but the combination of the five gross elements, namely earth, water, fire, air, and ether. Whenever there is a material body, it appears that such elements are newly created, but actually the elements are always existing outside of the body. Similarly, although you appear as a child in the womb of Devaki, you are also existing outside. You are always in your abode, but still you can simultaneously expand yourself into millions of forms. One has to understand your appearance with great intelligence because the material energy is also emanating from you. You are the original source of the material energy, just as the sun is the source of the sunshine. The sunshine cannot cover the sun globe, nor can the material energy, being an emanation from you, cover you. You appear to be in the three modes of material energy, but actually, the three modes of material energy cannot cover you. This is understood by the highly intellectual philosophers. In other words, although you appear to be within the material energy, you are never covered by it. We hear from the Vedic version that the Supreme Brahman exhibits his effulgence and therefore everything becomes illuminated. We can understand from Brahma Samhita that the Brahma Jyoti, or the Brahman effulgence, emanates from the body of the Supreme Lord. And from the Brahman effulgence, all creation takes place. It is further stated in the Bhagavad Gita that the Lord is also the support of the Brahman effulgence. Originally, He is the root cause of everything. But persons who are less intelligent think that when the Supreme Personality of Godhead comes within this material world, He accepts the material qualities. Such conclusions are not very mature, but are made by the less intelligent. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is directly and indirectly existing everywhere. He is outside this material creation and He is also within it. He is within this material creation not only as Garbhodakshayi Vishnu, He is also within the atom. Existence is due to His presence. Nothing can be separated from His existence. In the Vedic injunction we find that the Supreme Soul, or the root cause of everything, has to be searched out because nothing exists independently of the Supreme Soul. Therefore, the material manifestation is also a transformation of His potency. Both inert matter and the living force, the Soul, are emanations from Him. 
Only the foolish conclude that when the Supreme Lord appears, he accepts the conditions of matter. Even if he appears to have accepted the material body, he is still not subjected to any material condition. Krishna has therefore appeared and defeated all imperfect conclusions about the appearance and disappearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. My Lord, your appearance, existence, and disappearance are beyond the influence of the material qualities. Because your Lordship is the controller of everything and the resting place of the Supreme Brahman, there is nothing inconceivable or contradictory in you. As you have said, material nature works under your superintendence, just like a government officer working under the orders of the chief executive. The influence of subordinate activities cannot affect you. The Supreme Brahman and all phenomena are existing within you, and all the activities of material nature are controlled by your Lordship. You are called Shuklam. Shuklam, or whiteness, is the symbolic representation of the Absolute Truth because it is unaffected by material qualities. Lord Brahma is called Rakta, or red, because Brahma represents the qualities of passion for creation. Darkness is entrusted to Lord Shiva, because he annihilates the cosmos. The creation, annihilation, and maintenance of this cosmic manifestation is conducted by your potencies, yet you are always unaffected by those qualities. As confirmed in the Vedas, Harir Hi Nirguna Sakshat, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is always free from all material qualities. It is also said that the qualities of passion and ignorance are non-existent in the person of the Supreme Lord. My Lord, you are the Supreme Controller, the Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Great, maintaining the order of this cosmic manifestation. And in spite of your being the Supreme Controller, you have so kindly appeared in my home. The purpose of your appearance is to kill the followers of the demoniac rulers of the world who are in the dress of royal princes but are actually demons. I am sure that you will kill all of them and their followers and soldiers. I understand that you have appeared to kill the uncivilized Kamsa and his followers, but knowing that you were to appear to kill him and his followers, he has already killed so many of your predecessors, elder brothers. Now he is simply awaiting the news of your birth. As soon as he hears about it, he will immediately appear with all kinds of weapons to kill you. After this prayer of Vasudev, Devaki, the mother of Krishna, offered her prayers. She was very frightened because of her brother's atrocities. Devaki said, My dear Lord, your eternal forms like Narayan, Lord Ram, Hayashirsha, Varaha, Nishinga, Vaman, Baladev, and millions of similar incarnations emanating from Vishnu are described in the Vedic literature as original. You are original because all your forms as incarnations are outside of this material creation. Your form was existing before this cosmic manifestation was created. Your forms are eternal and all-pervading. They are self-effulgent, changeless, and uncontaminated by the material qualities. Such eternal forms are ever cognizant and full of bliss. They are situated in transcendental goodness and are always engaged in different pastimes. You are not limited to a particular form only. All such transcendental eternal forms are self-sufficient. I can understand that you are the Supreme Lord Vishnu. After many millions of years, when Lord Brahma comes to the end of his life, 
the annihilation of this cosmic manifestation takes place. At that time, the five elements, namely earth, water, fire, air, and ether, enter into the Mahatattva. The Mahatattva again enters by the force of time into the non-manifested total material energy. The total material energy enters into the energetic pradhan, and the pradhan enters into you. Therefore, after the annihilation of the whole cosmic manifestation, you alone remain with your transcendental name, form, quality, and paraphernalia. My Lord, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you because you are the director of the unmanifested total energy and the ultimate reservoir of the material nature. My Lord, the whole cosmic manifestation is under the influence of time, beginning from the moment of duration of the year. All act under your direction. You are the original director of everything and the reservoir of all potent energies. All the conditioned souls are continually fleeing from one body to another and one planet to another, yet they do not get free from the onslaught of birth and death. But when such a fearful living entity comes under the shelter of your lotus feet, he can lie down without anxiety of being attacked by formidable death. This statement by Devaki is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita by the Lord Himself. There the Lord says that even after traveling all over the universe, from Brahmaloka to Patalaloka, one cannot escape the attack of birth, death, disease, and old age. But one who enters the kingdom of God, the Lord says, is never again obliged to come to this material world. Devaki continued, Therefore, my Lord, I request you to save me from the cruel hands of the son of Ugrasen, Kamsa. I am praying to your Lordship to please rescue me from this fearful condition because you are always ready to give protection to your servitors. The Lord has confirmed this statement in the Bhagavad Gita by assuring Arjuna, You may declare to the world, My devotee shall never be vanquished. While thus praying to the Lord for rescue, Mother Devaki expressed her motherly affection. I understand that this transcendental form is generally perceived in meditation by the great sages, but I am still afraid, because as soon as Kamsa understands that you have appeared, he might harm you. So I request that for the time being, you become invisible to our material eyes. In other words, she requested the Lord to assume the form of an ordinary child. My only cause of fear from my brother Kamsa is due to your appearance. My Lord Madhusudan, Kamsa may not know that you are already born. Therefore, I request you to conceal this four-armed form of your Lordship, which holds the four symbols of Vishnu, namely the conch shell, the disc, the club, and the lotus flower. My dear Lord, at the end of the annihilation of the cosmic manifestation, you put the whole universe within your abdomen. Still, by your unalloyed mercy, you have appeared in my womb. I am surprised that you imitate the activities of ordinary human beings just to please your devotee. On hearing the prayers of Devaki, the Lord replied, My dear mother, in the millennium of Svayambhuv Manu, my father, Vasudev, was living as one of the Prajapatis. His name at that time was Sutapa, and you were his wife named Prijni. At that time, when Lord Brahma was desiring to increase the population, he requested you to generate offspring. You controlled your senses and performed severe austerities. By practicing the breathing exercises of the yoga system, 
both you and your husband could tolerate all the influences of the material laws. The rainy season, the onslaught of the wind, and the scorching heat of the sunshine. You also executed all religious principles. In this way, you were able to cleanse your heart and control the influence of material law. In executing your austerity, you used to eat only the leaves of the trees which fell to the ground. Then, with steady mind and controlled sex drive, you worshipped me, desiring some wonderful benediction from me. Both of you practiced severe austerities for 12,000 years by the calculation of the demigods. During that time, your mind was always absorbed in me. When you were executing devotional service and always thinking of me within your heart, I was very much pleased with you. O oh, sinless mother, your heart is therefore always pure. At that time also I appeared before you in this form just to fulfill your desire. And I asked you to ask whatever you desired. At that time you wished to have me born as your son. Although you saw me personally, instead of asking for your complete liberation from material bondage under the influence of my energy, you asked me to become your son. In other words, the Lord selected His mother and father, namely Prijni and Sutapa, specifically to appear in the material world. Whenever the Lord comes as a human being, He must have someone as a mother and a father. So He selected Prijni and Sutapa perpetually as His mother and father. And on account of this, neither Prijni nor Sutapa could ask the Lord for liberation. Liberation is not so important as the transcendental loving service of the Lord. The Lord could have awarded Prijni and Sutapa immediate liberation, but He preferred to keep them within this material world for His different appearances, as will be explained in the following verses. On receiving the benediction from the Lord to become His father and mother, both Prijni and Sutapa retired from the activities of austerity and lived as husband and wife in order to beget a child who was the Supreme Lord Himself. In due course of time, Prijni became pregnant and gave birth to the child. The Lord spoke to Devaki and Vasudev. At that time, my name was Prijni Garba. In the next millennium also, you took birth as Aditi and Kashyap, and I became your child of the name Upendra. At that time, my form was just like a dwarf, and for this reason I was known as Bamandev. I gave you the benediction that I would take birth as your son three times. The first time I was known as Prijni Garba, born of Prijni and Sutapa. The next birth I was Upendra, born of Aditi and Akashyap. And now, for the third time, I am born as Krishna from you, Devaki and Vasudev. I appeared in this Vishnu form just to convince you that I am the same Supreme Personality of Godhead, again taken birth. I could have appeared just like an ordinary child, but in that way you would not believe that I, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, have taken birth in your womb. My dear father and mother, you have therefore raised me many times as your child, with great affection and love, and I am therefore very pleased and obliged to you. And I assure you that this time you shall go back home, back to Godhead, on account of your perfection in your mission. I know you are very concerned about me and afraid of Kamsa. Therefore, I order you to take me immediately to Gokul and replace me with the daughter who has just been born to Yashoda. Having spoken thus, in the presence of his father and mother, the Lord turned himself into an ordinary child and remained silent.
Being ordered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudev attempted to take his son from the delivery room. And exactly at that time, a daughter was born of Nanda and Yashoda. She was Yogamaya, the internal potency of the Lord. By the influence of this internal potency, Yogamaya, all the residents of Kamsa's palace, especially the doorkeepers, were overwhelmed with deep sleep. And all the palace doors opened, although they were barred and shackled with iron chains. The night was very dark, but as soon as Vasudev took Krishna on his lap and went out, he could see everything just as in the sunlight. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said that Krishna is just like sunlight, and wherever there is Krishna, the illusory energy which is compared to darkness cannot remain. When Vasudeva was carrying Krishna, the darkness of the night disappeared. All the prison doors automatically opened. At the same time, there was thunder in the sky and severe rainfall. While Vasudeva was carrying his son Krishna in the falling rain, Lord Shesha, in the shape of a serpent, spread his hood over the head of Vasudeva so that he would not be hampered by the rainfall. Vasudeva came onto the bank of the Yamuna and saw that the water of the Yamuna was roaring with waves and that the whole span was full of foam. Still, in that furious feature, the river gave passage to Vasudeva to cross, just as the great Indian Ocean gave a path to Lord Ram when he was bridging over the gulf. In this way, Vasudeva crossed the river Yamuna. On the other side, he went to the place of Nanda Maharaj, situated in Gokul, where he saw all the cowherd men were fast asleep. He took the opportunity of silently entering into the house of Yashoda, and without difficulty, he exchanged his son for the baby girl, newly born in the house of Yashoda. Then, after entering the house very silently and exchanging the boy with the girl, he returned to the prison of Kamsa and silently put the girl on the lap of Devaki. He again clamped the shackles on himself so that Kamsa could not recognize that so many things had happened. Mother Yashoda understood that a child was born of her, but because she was very tired from the labor of childbirth, she was fast asleep. When she awoke, she could not remember whether she had given birth to a male or a female child. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the third chapter of Krishna, Birth of Lord Krishna.